Hello, everybody. Welcome along. I thought rather than write down all my thoughts on the images, I could cover many more images more efficiently by making you a short video. Don't worry, you won't be seeing me big like this all the way through. I'll shrink myself down in a second and we'll go through the results of the January 2021 competition on, on Forum Photosub about transparent subjects. I'm going to try to speak slowly because I'm obviously speaking in English, not in French, but I hope by speaking slowly and clearly you can follow what I'm saying about the images. Um, I really enjoyed the challenge of judging this competition because the theme was very specific, transparent subjects or translucent subjects, but that is quite a challenging theme for underwater photographers. I was thinking in my own photography, wow, what would, would I choose for that theme? And it's not an easy theme to immediately go and, and pull one image that you think really captures both the theme and is a strong photo. So I was reasonably generous in my adherence to the theme in that as long as the picture had some element of transparent, translucent subject. For me, that fitted the theme, and that was because it was a difficult theme. In a more easy theme, I would be more strict on the definition of the category. So I placed a lot of emphasis on the images who visually impressed me, as well as how much they, they, they stuck to the theme. So that's enough of me big. Let's switch over, if I can do the, the keyboard right. And now we'll start to run through the slideshow of the pictures. So I have prepared the slideshow of my 10 favorite entries, and we are going to go through them in ascending order, starting with the 10th picture and finishing with the first picture. Um, I'm using the names that are either on the photos or your forum names, um, and obviously I'm going to make a mess pronouncing them, um, especially when the word can be pronounced in English rather than in French, but I will do my best. So here we go. The 10th position picture was by um, Coyote, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and is a nice picture of a, of a little anemone shrimp with, with transparent. What I liked about this photograph in particular is shrimps are a common transparent subject, but many pictures of them are messy or technically flawed. The common mistake that photographers make is the eyes of the shrimp stick out and the eyes of the shrimp stick out of the area of focus. And so you have a lovely shrimp with the eyes not in focus or without a good connection for the viewer with the eye because the rest of the animal is, is in a mess. Is There's so many bits sticking in all different directions that it, it's not very attractive. This picture though gets all of that correct. You have a a very, very nice pose of the shrimp and also a very attractive shrimp. So these things make for a strong picture. I like that you can see the transparency of the body, but also the body has nice colors on it. The pose is good. I like the, the, the folded arms. They give a, a complete shape and the background is strong. Um, it would have been improved the image had the shrimp been slightly higher and against the, um, the mushroom coral that's behind it and without the little bit of, of black sand at the bottom of the frame, which although it gives a base to the image and is not a big problem, is not very attractive and everything else in the frame is so attractive, it's more of a obvious missing point. Okay, ninth position is Miguel. This one is written on the, on the photo. And this is a much sought after classic subject, a Malibi nudibranch, a very transparent individual. And what really impresses me of this photo is the lighting style really works well to reveal the detail of a transparent subject. Sometimes with a transparent subject, you want to emphasize the transparency. Other times you want to allow the viewer to really see this animal that can be hard to see in real life. And this picture really allows you to enjoy seeing the detail of, of the two rhinophores sticking up at the front, the hooded mouth, as we, we call them, hooded nudibranchs in, in, in British, in English, sorry, as well, um, where, where they, they eat, uh, and the body going off. For me, the, the disappointment of this picture is the framing. 
is um, the focus is made the photographer center the rhinophore in the middle of the picture. And as a result, the body of the animal is not balanced well in the frame. It's on a nice, clean background, but it doesn't have a, a strong balance across the frame. The body is going all on one side and chopping from the side of the frame. But the lighting and the focus is, is very strong of this desirable creature. Okay, the next photo is by um, Marco Polo. I, I don't know um, I, I, I what's the forum name. I um, And it is a photograph of eggs. I, I don't know myself the species of, of eggs. I presume they are fish eggs, but I, I don't know the species. But they are very beautiful and again, a very well-controlled lighting that really reveals the detail in this transparent subject. The angle of the light really pulls out a lot of detail. My disappointment with this photograph is I would love to see a, a tighter crop. I would like the whole picture to be full of, of circles, of balls. Then I think it would be a very beautiful, slightly abstract picture just all these lovely repeating shapes all the way across the picture. Um, and for me, that, that is really stops this picture being placed higher up. But I, I really like the photo and I love the subject and I love the lighting and the detail on it. I would just love to see only balls. You could crop this picture in, but I would encourage the photographer to return to this subject, especially as is often a winter subject, these fish eggs, and really fill up the frame with them. Okay, seventh place is by photographer Fisheye. Um, that's how we say it in English anyway. And is a, um, a Pelagia uh, Noctiluca um, jellyfish, a mauve stinger we call them in English, um, swimming, I guess, in, in the Mediterranean Sea. They're more common there than any, anywhere else, although they're, they're widespread. Um, the, for me, the subject and the sun are both nice subjects, but neither one and, and the picture is very striking because of that. But for me, neither one is captured really as well as it could be captured. Um, the sun is a beautiful sunburst, but it's just become too much and we have no nice watercolor, no nice sky color, just sunbeams. This picture would probably be better to lose all the color and just make it black and white rather than to have such a, for me, a, a unsatisfying watercolor. The jellyfish, I would like to see a little bit bigger in the picture. It's not, you know, it's not going to swim away from you faster than you can swim. Oh, my camera has died on me. I'm not sure what happened to my technology there, but um, without just restarting the software, I'm, I'm back again. So um, I was saying with the main subject, the jellyfish, I would like to see this bigger in the picture. That would give me more transparency to enjoy here, the transparent subject, is relatively small. I like a picture where the subject can be small in the picture, but when you're using a small in the picture subject, it shouldn't be in the middle of the picture. It, you should place it in another part of the frame to use the space more um, in a more balanced way. Okay, this um, another picture of uh, the same type of jellyfish. Um, this one is much larger in the frame and has great color and light and detail on the jellyfish. It looks very beautiful, the jellyfish in this. And the feeling of the blue in the background is, is really great. It doesn't have the drama of the previous picture with the sunburst, but technically I think is a much stronger um, picture put together, even though the pose of the jellyfish is not so nice. The quality of the light, the quality of the exposure is much stronger in this frame. And oh, this one, I forgot to say who took it, is by, by Patrick. And it's very, very nice. Right, into our top five. So um, all of these top five, they are all strong images and all with strong transparent subjects. I think um, this photo here of the cleaner shrimp in front of the moray eels, a, um, a, um, a, a, a gold, um, is from the Red Sea moray eel. Um, this, um, the Mori. Um, I, I like very much this photo. It's fun that the shrimp is in focus and the eel is a, a very nice, slightly out of focus background. I think that works very well. But I, I'm disappointed by the lack of interaction of these two subjects. You know, we know that this is a cleaning shrimp and the Mori eel is wanting to, to be cleaned. 
And I think this is a, a funny pose of the two of them together. But I, I feel that probably a, another frame in the series where the shrimp is interacting with the moray, you know, a classic image of you know, the moray with the mouth open and the shrimp going in, it would be a stronger photograph and also would still say just as much about the transparent sub transparency of this nice cleaner shrimp. So that would be my um, improvement suggestion for this. Is I, I want to see the interaction of these two subjects. Um, and that was by, oh gosh, goodness, um, De A, De B, um, or 2A, 2B, as we say in England. Anyway, well done, very nice picture. Okay, um, now in fourth place, um, we have um, Simon um, with this juvenile um, lyre-tailed hogfish is a type of wrasse. Um, and um, I think this is probably also taken in the Red Sea as well. And although they're, they're widespread Indo-Pacific fish, but um, they're common to find them. The place to search for these particular juveniles is around big um, Anella sea fans. There is a lot of them in that habitat. So, and um, But this one is very young and the transparency looks really great. I would have tried to maybe shoot this pit fish bigger in the picture. Um, it is quite a balanced composition as it, as it is, but the background is, is really nothing very interesting. And I would prefer to see a little bit more fish and a little bit less background in this particular case, because although the background is not a bad background, it's not really adding anything particularly special to the photograph. As I said, you can get this type of fish around um, sea fans and things like that and they make a very nice background. Okay, in third position is um, Cedric um, with um, this um, tinafore, is a comb jellyfish, we say, call it in English, um, and this picture is, is very very nice, it's a very classic jellyfish photo with beautiful sun rays, lovely watercolour, very, very well lit jellyfish or comb jelly that really shows up very well in the photo for me, the viewer, to enjoy looking at the, the subject. I think it's really um, very pleasing um, picture for me to enjoy. My only criticism of it is that I don't think the frame is so as well balanced as it could be. All of the subject matter is on on the was well, is on the left side. I'm not reverse. So on the left side of the um, of the frame, with the sun and the the jelly right above each other. I think if you had allowed the jellyfish to move a little bit more onto the the right side of the frame, it would be um, which is that way. On, I'm, I'm flipped over in this. Um, then I think that the sun and the jellyfish in opposite sides would fill the frame better and balance the composition but it's still a very nice picture. Um, second place um, is this very pleasing image of a, a scuba diver diving underneath ice. I presume this is in a lake because the ice is thin. It look, doesn't look like it's um, in, the, in the ocean. It looks like in a, a lake, uh, maybe, maybe in, the, in the mountains or, or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, I think that the composition of this picture is very strong. It's a very nicely balanced picture. The pose of the diver or the, the timing of the photo really gives the diver a connection with the rest of the picture, which I really, really like. I love the, the, um, all of those um, feelings. And then this picture was taken by um, um, Thierry. Um, um, and I think it's very nice, very well observed and taken photograph. I would, a couple of things I would suggest. For, first of all, um, the only thing I really had against the photo was was the photo really, was what I liked about the photo really relating to the transparency? And for me, there is transparency in the photo, but maybe it's not really a, a, a subject that really is all about transparency. But nonetheless, I think it definitely fits the theme and the composition is very strong. It's really, you know, is in the top two for me. So it's a very nice picture. Um, I would suggest also to maybe to try to process this picture with some, to try to take away some of the fisheye distortion of, of the frame. I think with a, just a slightly defished effect, 
the surface might look a little bit more pleasing in this picture. Um, and because I think that it needs to feel quite flat, the surface, for the reality. So just a very small defishing effect, which would, would, would bend the picture, uh, or as you're looking at me, it would bend it. Um, instead of being like that, it would bend it like that, bend it away, you know, away in the middle slightly. I think it would maybe improve the picture very slightly because um, it's a very nice frame and it's really, really a, a picture to get perfect. Okay, and our winner in this in this category for for my selection was um, this very nice uh, Medusa by Olivier, um, which I think is is a very beautiful frame with a lot of interesting color pattern, translucency, transparency. Um, is a classic composition with a jellyfish. In English, we call it the light bulb jellyfish photo, where you make sure that the jellyfish moves between you and the sun, and then the sun illuminates it from the back. And in this case here, Olivia has also put the flash on the front um, and made the picture. My, my, and I think it's very beautiful effect. I think the mix of the yellows, the greens, and the blues creates quite a restful color palette. The colors are all quite similar. It's just a, a pleasant image to spend time absorbing. I would think that this picture could be improved by cropping the, the photograph so that the image is more symmetrical in the frame. As it is, it's almost symmetrical, but not quite. And for a viewer, that is slightly frustrating. I would prefer to see the picture just cropped a little bit to make the most of the symmetry of the composition. I think that it would make the picture even stronger. But I, ah, I'm gone again. But I really like the image, right? Hooray, I'm back. Sorry about that, having a few technical issues with my recording software today. But I wanted to conclude by saying a big congratulations to everybody to find such strong images on, a, I think, a very challenging theme. I really enjoyed judging the competition and I hope that you have found my commentary useful. I tried not just to say everything is perfect and instead I tried to give you some insight into which photos I particularly enjoyed seeing and, and tried to think of ways that all of them could be improved, which I hope you find useful. Anyway, that's all from me. Au revoir. See you all soon. Bye-bye.